This episode is made possible by the support we get from Fort Collins Kia. If you are in the market for any electric Kia, not only do they never add market adjustments, they will deliver your car to you anywhere in the 48 contiguous states for out-of-spec viewers. More information in the link in the show notes. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Out of Spec podcast. Thank you for joining me today. We have a group here on the podcast where we talk about all things electric vehicle that we have not had before. This is a fun new mix, um, some old faces, some new faces, and I'm really excited to hear their story because as you may or may not know, if you have been paying attention to the Out of Spec Reviews channel, to Twitter, where we're, o- we're over there a lot. But uh, these guys, w- along with uh, plenty other guys, went on a <laughs> a race across Southern America in only electric vehicle trucks from Jacksonville, Florida, so the coast on the east, all the way to the west, to San Diego. One shot, no stopping, seeing how the charging infrastructure held up, how the EVs, you know, their efficiency. And then, of course, it was a race, not no speeding, no going 10 over the limit, right? I'll have y'all give me all the details, but it was pretty exciting. And I want to hear all about it because you all were in the Rivian R1T, right? Okay. That's exciting. Thank you for coming onto the podcast to tell your story. Um, We've got Dominic, Jerome, and Colby. I know like how Dominic and Jerome are linked to Out of Spec. Dominic runs the Batteries Included podcast. Jerome does our Out of Spec Renew channel. Colby, how did you get roped into this whole deal? So my cousin's pretty big on like the EV Twitter because he rents out his Teslas on Turo. And he saw a tweet from Kyle saying, hey, we need an R1T out of Jacksonville. I was about to go to bed and he texted me and I was like, yeah, why not? I'll do it. So he sent him all my contact information and I was at work the next morning and got a text from Kyle saying, hey, let's do this. And it was insane. How fun. So you really just opportunistic hey let's go on an adventure with these guys i don't know how fun yeah (laughs) so this is your r1t this is my r1t correct okay can you tell me about the specs of your r1t so my r1t is an oh gosh it's uh it's the one it's an adventure edition i think oh gosh let me just pull it up real quick i'm sorry no problem take Um, your time it is an awesome truck yeah awesome truck yeah it's an adventure package. It's one of the first ones that they released right after they were doing the launch edition ones. It has mm-hmm. the 21 road tires and um, all quad motor, large battery, not the max battery, but the large one. So it does about 350 on a full charge. Nice. Okay. So you got roped into it. So glad you did. Dominic and Jerome were like, of course, we're coming along. And y'all took off. So we're going to go over like the stats of your efficiency, your experience charging, all of that. Uh, I want to know, yeah, just what were your feelings when you first took off? Like, did you, were you confident that the Rivian was going to do well across this long, long trip? And how many miles was it in the end? 2,200 miles. And with the team, we were pretty confident we had a very good chance of winning because on paper, we are the one using the less energy. We have a pretty decent battery pack. And also, uh, the infrastructure kind of works for us, especially on some some segment of the road trip where Rivian was the only one to have battery uh, chargers. So we were expecting to make a difference there. Unfortunately, (laughs) Tesla came up and added even more chargers where we thought we would be the only one with a charger. So it didn't work out exactly how we wanted, but... um, I think we all won because, again, we used the less energy out of the four pickup trucks. So that's my win. (laughs) Okay. So, yeah, Rivian has the Adventure Network, which they have announced that they're opening up later this year to all EVs, by the way. And Rivian has announced, I mean, they're going NAX, of course, but they also, their customers are going to be able to get the adapters. But on this road trip, you did not have the adapter. So you were stuck to CCS charging infrastructure. Right. Well, that's okay. Okay, so um, yeah, Dom, go ahead. I was just gonna say, well, we we started out really strong, so I was 
So we, our competition was pretty stiff, okay, because we had their Silverado EV. It's got a huge battery pack in it, right? And, it's, and it can also charge at very high levels. Uh, so that was a consideration. But we had such a great start. Like Colby's, like was driving out of the city. He did most of the driving. Um, we, you know, uh, Jerome and I had some turns, but and Jerome I think drove more than I did even. But uh, yeah, leave, just leaving like the start from the beach. Colby's like master through the. He works for NASCAR, by the way, not not driving, but uh, you know, I think it's rubbing off on him a little bit because he was like in through that traffic really nice and smooth. You know, at not not speeding just. Getting, so we were way out ahead of everybody like early on. So it was really looking mm. good. Yeah. Mm. That's a great. good start. Yeah. Okay. Great start. Yeah. Yeah. So we had the Rivian, of course, the Silverado EV, uh, the Cybertruck and the F-150 Lightning, by the way. Didn't mention that in the beginning, but that is important to note. These are the competitive forces on the road. So you took off um, and how so how, it was what was your average speed overall it sounds like you were keeping stats along the way also noting that you used less energy than the other evs so how are you tracking that and what were the major numbers that you saw throughout your trip well at each charger we would check how much we've used and overall i think we were at two miles per kilowatt hour which is by far better than the heaviest uh, the heavier of the trucks. Uh, also, we were quite quick at charging, not as quick as the Cybertruck, cyber because Kyle and the guy use a completely different strategy, which worked very well, which would not have worked with our car. So they did very short recharge, but very often, three times as many. So they did 33 uh, charge for about five to 10 minutes max. We did 10 or 11 recharge for about 20 to 25 minutes each time. Mm. So completely different strategy. Uh, again, with the CCS, we couldn't charge as fast anyway. So there was no way we would have used the same strategy as those guys. Um, to be fair, I think at the beginning, we had a good advantage. We were early on, we uh, again, for the first few hours. But I think we only realized our a Kyle in particular were competitive uh, two steps above us. Then after the first third, we realized we had to you know, put the foot to the metal. And obviously st staying within the speed limit are the rules we were to follow. Um, but then we you know, caught up with those guys, but the recharging infrastructure and the Rivian as it is now, couldn't re not really let us win. I think the only way we could have won, um, I, I don't know if we can mention the time difference between trucks yet, but it's not that big. Um, the only way we could have won if we maybe have worked a little bit more with the air suspension to have the car even lower and get an even better efficiency. Because mm. again, the time difference between us and the first truck is minute considering the 2200 miles. Mm. Yeah, so it sounded like you really needed to start off with a competitive attitude, but it's hard to really get in that space when you're like, oh my gosh, we have a, the whole way across the country to go. Like, how early should we be getting competitive? But we do know how important it is to try to get as efficient as possible in, a, in an electric vehicle just because of the differences in the infrastructure. Like you're saying, you know, trying to hop from one to the other, it might be a little bit more patchy in different areas. Were you mostly using EVgo, Electrify America, Rivian Adventure Network, or a mix of all of them, or even others? Maybe Colby can reply to this one. Yeah. Mainly we were using EA stations. Um, we used that one Rivian Adventure Network. We actually used a Ma Magic Dock Tesla station, which was pretty cool. Nice. And then we went to a Florida Power and Electric, which gave us a pretty big headache. We were only pulling 130 kilowatts there, which mm. definitely put a big um, bummer. Like it was a big hit into our into our drive. I have the stats here. Actually, our average speed across the country was 74 miles per hour. Nice. And um, our efficiency was 1.98 miles per kilowatt, which was pretty good. And we made it across the country with only burning 1,200 kilowatt hours. So pretty good. Mm. Um, I think the biggest thing that happened was we had a pretty bad start just based off efficiency wise because it started raining. And mm. um, 
we left on like 93% since we had to drive to the coast. So we didn't really have the best start. I think if we would have been able to make it to that EA station in Shipley, which the Silverado did, I think we, I really think that we could have won it. But doing that and then having to go to that Florida Power and Electric station just really put a hole. We were 30 minutes behind and that's where we ended up, if I can say that. Yeah. Okay. So it sounds like it was, it was really close. So were you like on the highway, you could, you, you could track each other. Were you passing each other? Like were you waving and saying like, screw mm -hmm. yous, you drive by, like what's going on? There was some passing. There was some <laughs> passing. There was some drafting. There was like hanging out at the same, uh, super or charge stations together. You know, it was, uh, it was pretty, pretty cool actually. Yeah. Oh, super fun. Most I mean, yeah, I'm sad I missed out on it. Go ahead, Jerome. Most of the passing was done when each of us were charging because we were, you know, following the same speed nonstop, mm -hmm. um, almost like cruise control and mm -hmm. ma the max speed we could do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Speaking of, I know Colby has been driving with the Rivian R1T for a while. It's yours. Um, I've driven one too. I, I like how it rides, you know, but what did y'all think driving it so far? What were your impressions of this electric truck? Did you like how it drived? Were there any tools that you liked? Would you change anything about it? I, I liked it a lot. I thought it was great. I had a, just a few minutes before in a, in a Rivian r one I drove Kyle's maybe like 10 or 15 minutes once. Uh, so this was like a really good experience for me. Uh, I think maybe I got four or six hours, I think, driving, something like that. I'm not sure. Um, I, yeah, it's such a great truck. Just the ride, handling, the, the UI, like the screen, all the information there. It's all pretty good. Uh, maybe the navigation is a little, has a little bit of an issue. Maybe Colby can get into that a little bit more because he understands that a bit more. But I mean, personally, I would. That's. I think if I was going to buy an EV today, I had you know unlimited funds. That's probably what I would go for. Mm, interesting. Yeah, about that route planning, Colby. Why don't you tell me a little bit? Oh gosh, the Rivian route planner is terrible. And I hate to say it because I love everything else about the truck. Just like how Dominic said, if you gave me $500,000 to go buy a car, Rivian every day. I think it's the best around, best all around car you can buy right now. Per and I'm not trying to be biased. I personally truly believe that. But the route planning on it, I mean, I had a Model 3 for two years before I had the Rivian and the Tesla route planning is amazing. It tells you how long you have to be at each charger, how long, what percent you're going to get there with. Every charger we left on this trip, it said we weren't going to make it to the next charger. It, mm. it just, it always said that we weren't going to make it, but we made it. We made but it. We were make it there. Right. Well, yeah, we, we did some fast math and uh, we're able <laughs> to tell that we could make it, but we cut it close a lot. We would get there with uh, one mile, two mile. I know Jerome was pulling up there on fumes once. It like turned into turtle mode on the Rivian. But no, I, the route planning is just terrible. And I, I we did it by hand the whole time with uh, plug share. I think that's the best way to do it right now. I think with Tesla opening up their network, I mean, there's going to be a lot more stations. So maybe it will get better, but I don't know. It just it just doesn't work out for me. I've had the car for a year and a half now and never used the uh, route planner in it. Yeah, I think that's really important in the EV experience is that you can trust the software within it to get you from one place to the other and you don't have to use all the apps. But I, it, I don't think it should come as a surprise to anyone that we do have to supplement with PlugShare and with all the charging apps and um, do, do some quick math. You need to have your little notebook there to make sure that you can make it which is just kind of part of the the fun right but it would have been a different story had one rivian and uh, already had access to the tesla supercharger network which just happened earlier this week or yesterday march 18th i think uh so and we had back then uh, like this event a week a month before or a month later the, the results could be completely different yeah right. so, yeah so, so many little things have, have been different it would have been totally a different result maybe if we had lowered the uh, suspension to the lowest setting for the thing maybe that would uh, increase our efficiency enough to give us an edge or if we had had just a little bit more battery at the very beginning uh just a few things like that you know could have just really altered the uh, results hmm. okay so Michigan is 18 months old all the other trucks are brand new trucks so maybe there would be a difference if we had a brand new Rivian. Mm, Not mm, an excuse, it, but it is a fact, yeah. 
that's sure. true. A, yeah. a Rivian Adventure Network station actually just opened up on 10 today in uh, Baton Rouge. So oh. could have hit that. So <laughs> Louisiana, how yep. fun. Uh, so y'all are really keep pointing to how just this little change, this little change that could have changed the game, put us in a different position for better or for worse, whatever it is. So it, it does sound like it was close, but was any at any point where you're like, oh my gosh, we're too far behind or oh my gosh, we're really in the lead. Or was it just mostly kind of steady? Or was there someone else in the way back? It was steady all along for the first three vehicles. Early on, the fourth vehicle, they kind of let go. Mm. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, they, had, they, had, they don't even have the smallest battery pack, but they just took a more mellow approach to the competition. And wow. every time they would stop for a recharge, they would try the local uh, restaurants. The food F-150 <laughs> Lightning. <laughs> yeah. every, every time we looked up, uh, they were sending a message they were there with Burger King has, or they're going into Taco Bell or going into this other chain, chain restaurant. It was like hilarious. That's pretty funny. There's, yeah, there's like Kyle's approach to EV road trips, which is like, you know, drive fast, get there at 0%, charge for five minutes until you can get to the next charger, jump, 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 jump. Or there's the leisurely, hey, we'll stop and smell the roses and try the Burger King nearby by and laugh with our buddies uh but even though this was kind of a race but it was also to just see okay can these trucks do it how can they do it and how does the infrastructure line up so of course yeah it would have been different if you had the adapter and access to the tesla supercharging network because it is just uh, more everywhere than not but rivian does say that they're going to continue building out their adventure network um magic dock stations hopefully will grow too so that ccs can be used but um it seems like you know, you just had to use what was there and that's just how it goes. So any highlights, like favorite parts of the trip that you're going to remember maybe forever? Being with these two guys. Uh, I was just going to say the most important. It, we have clearly shown that in early 2024, you can travel the whole country with any electric EV truck and make it roughly around the same time, whichever truck you use or infrastructure you use. And we made it without an issue. Mm -hmm. um, I prefer the way we did it uh, because we would stop again for 20 to 25 minutes every time, which allows you for some things you need to do when you stop. Whereas we don't understand how Kyle and the guys managed to do it when you stop less than five minutes at a Tesla supercharger where, where there is no toilets. We don't really know how they did it. I guess they have em empty bottles in the Cybertruck because oh. there's no way they could have it. Like, they couldn't buy food. They couldn't go to the toilets. Whereas we had a more comfortable experience arriving mm -hmm. only 20 minutes after them. So they had a lot of effort. We had a very comfy drive and at the end of the day, again, we arrived only 20 minutes later. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it's you were not in such a stringent car with the stringent approach for sure. And it makes me think, you know, if you're going to get off the highway and go charge, you might make it worth your while as well. Like, you know, uh, were the charging stations for you right off the highway? I know Tesla typically has pretty good right off the highway. We're waiting for more pilot flying J stations with EVgo to be right off the highway at a travel center. But did you have to venture away from the highway much? Yeah, the, I would say the furthest that we ventured off the highway was five miles. Um, but it was another highway. So we were able to go 85 down that. Um, and then the one that we stopped at in Alabama, it was like three miles off the highway, but traffic lights. So that one was pretty bad. I, I mean, I'm, I think, I think just those two on their own could have costed us 30 minutes getting there and back. Um, so I mean, tell, if we would have sucked too. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, for real. You drove through the night. Was it, you know, is that typically the, the slow, the nicer time because no one's on the road, no traffic, better weather, maybe? I mean, I, I love driving at night. I think Colby did most of the night driving. I, actually, mm -hmm. I, Colby's like a secret weapon because he's like 22 or he's pretty young, you know, so he's got all this energy. He can go for like forever, you know? <laughs> it's like really no seriously. driven he's the like whole our... thing if we didn't ask for the steering wheel. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I bet that's good. I mean, coming from NASCAR, you know how to be from, you know how to be behind a wheel for sure. Would you do anything 
different next time? I know that you said like, you know, starting with a hundred percent, um, I don't know, like, could you do anything different? You wanted to lower the suspension. Is there anything else significant that you think would have really made a difference? It seems like it was pretty close. Maybe done a little bit more research on the chargers beforehand and just wouldn't make the difference. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Cause did you just wing it and just go, go by charger, charger to charger, or did you kind of look ahead? Kind of had a decent plan until we missed the one in Chipley because my plan was getting to that one, which would have, you know, gotten us further. Um, mm -hmm. But missing that one kind of screwed everything up. And then we had to stop at that Florida power one, oh. Florida power and light, which totally just jammed us up at 130 kilowatts. Oh, and, bummer. And so, and so many, so many of these charging stops that we made, we had to change like, uh, the pedestal that we were charging at, like every one, the first six at least for sure. And uh, a lot more after that, we had to, you know, we were charging at one and it was either yeah. too slow or something not right, right, right with it, you know, wasn't charging at all. So we'd have to switch so that we, we lost, you know, I don't know how much time just to that little situation as well. There were two chargers out of the whole trip that the first stall we plugged into, it worked. It didn't even work on the Magic Dock Tesla. It only worked on the Rivian Adventure Network and one of the EA stations, which is mind boggling. We had to mm. we had to pull out and plug in somewhere else. Um, yeah, no, it was bad. That's interesting. Do you did you see a cons like was there a consistent problem? What do you it just stop? Just the chargers. It would just stop. It would mm. it would it would yeah. charge for about two minutes and then it would charge at full speed as well and then it would just stop. Of course, there was also that there's well, that one charger. I forget where exactly it was. Where we had the the one beside it started leaking water, like the yes. water cooling hose. Started leaking. That, that was I the first that one we plugged clip. into. That's why we had to move. I was standing out there, and I hear like a like a click noise, and the charge light on my car goes red. I look over, I pull the charger out, and it's just leaking coolant. Hmm. So okay. we, I had to back it up and pull into another stall. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Weird. And we've got Jerome back. He dropped off for a quick second, just, yeah. just a moment and you're bringing it back, but that's weird that the coolant was leaking out of the cable. That's not something that I've seen before. Never, never heard of that happening before. No. Yeah. Just a, it's not very reassuring. I would say no, I wouldn't want water, that to happen. There's like high voltage and water just doesn't mix. You know? Yeah. Not, not the, so when that happened, did you like, did you write a note on plug share? Did you let the, the charge point operator know, or were you like, I'm going to go. We had to go. We had to go. Well, we informed the local, the people coming. Some right. of them had no clue how to use it. Right. So and that's something which... that's, yeah, that's uh -huh. something we've noticed as, uh, in several occasions. People were using the Electrify America network because they were provided an electric car, either like a rental, like a cheap rental, or they were using it for work, or it was uh, yeah, a work vehicle. And they mm -hmm. had no training or no explanation how to use it and they didn't have a good experience so there's definitely some work to do on this aspect yeah i've seen that as well at charging stations where someone will mm -hmm. come up and be like hey this is a rental car it's the only <laughs> one they had can you help me i don't really know what's going on i'm like yeah sure uh, but also you know you have to have the the you know confidence to walk up to someone and be like i have no idea what's going on yeah. here never charge an electric vehicle or vice versa say i see someone struggling i'm gonna yeah. walk over and help them very big adventure. I, I wish I could have been there. I probably would have liked being in the Rivian. I, I love that truck, but um, I also haven't ridden in a Lightning very much or the Silverado. So I think that would have been cool too. And we will have podcasts with all the other groups. If you're seeing this one first, you know, so you can check in with all the teams and then we're going to get everyone onto one pad podcast to just all these guys to talk about the experience because it seems really fun. It was kind of like, uh, you know, we got, got the cyber truck. Let's get all the trucks. Let's go from one coast to the other. And I'm glad that y'all got to be a part of it. It seems like a really fun adventure. And like you said, Jerome, proving that you can road trip, like basically any EV, right? Any EV along that route. Most of them have a similar range nowadays. You know, maybe some are harder than others and some are easier than others, but it is doable for sure. Do you see the electric truck route in this in this industry like continuing do you think ev trucks are you know like where we should go do you think that there's going to change tremendously in the future what did you take away from specifically the truck aspect of this do you want to go colby i mean yes yeah, sure i'll go i mean 
I love a truck ever since I had my Model 3. I loved my Model 3, but it didn't do the things I like to do. It couldn't haul stuff, couldn't tow stuff. I think, especially with the speed that an electric truck can go, unlike a gas truck can, I mean, the Rivian goes 0 to 60 in three seconds, and then it can tow your boat. And then it can <laughs> it can do pretty much anything you want. It can go off-road. I think like it is just the best all-around car you can own it can do everything it's quicker than a porsche and it can tow your boat i mean and it can go off road up mountains so i don't know what else you would want in a car but i think it's really got everything that is a glowing review yeah that's pretty good (laughs) (laughs) yeah super cool okay so would you do it again would you keep this crew oh yeah Oh yeah, I go with these guys <laughs> again for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. Good, yeah, so fun. Um, anything else that you want folks to know? Of course, they can find you. We'll link to everyone in the show notes, so you can go find these guys specifically. And the video will be out soon if it's not already out by the time this podcast is coming out. But any other takeaways that you think are important that you're going to carry through that you think about EVs in general or your experience? Yeah. Again, anybody that says you cannot. You know, cr- go cross country or use a EV truck. We've proven them wrong. I think the next thing for us to do is do the same trip, towing um, like a large, like a car in the back, just to show <sighs> you can do everything you want. Or you will, you know, trailer just yeah. to show you can do it. But I think we've proven the point is you can decide last minute to take an EV truck and go cross country under two days and. I mean, you could do the same thing with a regular pickup truck. You would maybe you would save a few hours, but you would still be tired. So that's not something you're going to do in less than you know thirty hours anyway. So you need to stop to buy some food. You need to stop to go to the restroom. So at the end of the day, it's hard to make this trip any quicker, realistically, or staying mm-hmm. under the speed limit. Yeah. So make it a lot longer and put something yeah. on the tow hitch. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good thing looking forward. That would be really cool to do. I'd love to hear what our audience thinks we should do next too. Dominic Colby, big takeaways. I think I would say is take any opportunity that comes your way. I mean, I was at work on Thursday, (laughs) was supposed to do something completely different that weekend and came out with 11 friends who I can't wait to see again. And it was a ton of fun. So don't miss out on opportunities. These things only come your way once in a lifetime. So Take anything that comes your way. You won't regret it. Oh, I love that, Colby. You can count me as a 12th friend on that list. Friend. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was thinking but you might be joining us, Francie. I thought this was going to be just an extra added bonus, you know. But It would have been great to have at least yeah. a, one chick on the trip. But right. I'm going right. <laughs> to let y'all yeah. sit in the car for that long. I'll, I'll, I'll go to the next one. Right. I'll bring more yeah. trucks, all cars, yeah. Yeah, there it's we just, go. Just, yeah. Right. Just uh, avoid the Silverado if you have a aversion to like strong smells. You know, I, for some <laughs> for some reason that was a truck that had like really funky smell in it by the end of the trip. You know, I don't oh, know why. God. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine sitting in a truck for that long. Right. With vinyl I mean, ours, seats. ours is fine. Yeah. Ours was fine. I don't know. Yeah. Hmm. Rivian's just a just a big old winner here, but yeah. um, yeah, I'll, I'll you know I'll take this out if we're not allowed to say. But did. Did you win or did you come in second, third, or fourth? Came in third. <laughs> third. Wow. Yeah. We thought we had a good chance at poss- possibly winning, but at least second. You know, at that yeah. one the one part, we thought we were going to, with the uh, with the Rivian uh, Adventure Network, there was like this one place in the desert there that we thought we had a charging uh, potential there, but other people did not. Like, so uh, it, yeah, and so I th- we really thought that was a great chance to, you know, get ahead of, yeah. the, be, you know, securely ahead of the cyber track because we were really, really close with the cyber track in a lot of places, especially close to the end. Mm. Yeah, there was, uh, then, they, were, mm. they were right behind us, we were right, behind, we were right behind them. It was like, uh, <laughs> it, was, it was pretty cool. We, we, we charged it, yeah, yeah. We charged for five minutes at that Rivian Adventure Network thinking that we were going to pull out ahead and we're driving down this road and we just see. It looks like Batman car coming out, just <laughs> whipping around the corner, and there's Kyle. And then we just drafted all the way down the highway. It was insane. Uh, oh, that is crazy. Yeah, Jerome, did you have anything else? Yes. One advantage the Tesla truck had is, as you mentioned it earlier, all the Tesla 
chargers are very next to the freeway, whereas yeah. the Electrify America are typically on a Walmart. So you have to drive a couple of miles. And this has made a huge difference because yeah. if those guys had to stop 33 times and drive an extra five miles every time, they would have been way behind us. So oh, yeah. yeah, Tesla did make a difference with the structure, infrastructure. You yeah, could have guessed huge. that. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not too surprised by that, but I'm really glad that you, you know, yeah, all took advantage of this opportunity, got to make some new friends, got to race and see the capability of not only just the trucks in general, but road tripping them as far as you did. Colby, at the end, did you road trip it all the way back on your own? No, bearded Tesla Justin drove it back. I had work on Monday and actually missed my flight um, wow. out of San Diego. I, I overslept in Jerome's room. <laughs> And I wake up at 9.30 a.m. to my, to, I look over at Jerome and I look at my phone, I'm like, no way. So I booked it to the airport, got on the next flight out of there. But uh, yeah, I, miss, I missed my flight. Happens, yeah. man. That's I a nice- I stayed up all night so that wouldn't happen. <laughs> oh, okay. just no sleep. No, no sleep, sleep. No. good to work. Yeah, Thank y'all so much. Back, yeah, thank you all so much. I know that that was a lot of hard work. I appreciate even more of your time coming onto the podcast to tell me more about your experience. I can't wait to watch the whole video. I'm sure it's going to be epic. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. I'm glad you had a fun time. And audience, let us know what questions you have specifically for the Rivian crew. <laughs> they did pretty well. Seems like y'all had a good approach and a good attitude too, which makes a huge difference. So thank y'all. Thank you, Francie. Of course. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for tuning into the Out of Spec podcast. Stay tuned for other updates from other teams, as well as other electric topics that we cover here all the time. Have a tremendously wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.